Thanks for tuning in. It's Friday, 17th of May, 2019. Glad you could be part of us. You know when it's Friday, we all get a spotty. We have a few things lined up for you. I am with Brian Mushuri tonight here with me. How are you, Brian? Hi, Hilary. Um, we were not with you last week. Yes, I was not here. And uh, as you can see and hear, <coughs> my voice is somehow distorted. This is not how I speak other days. But uh, anyway, yes. Karibu Sana. Thank you very much. Eddie will not be with us today, but we'll have our uh, awesome discussion here. A very good Friday evening. <coughs> my name is Dereva Hilary. Welcome to the program. Now, uh, first things first. Yes. Ligi Meisha. Ah, yeah, absolutely. Ligi Meisha. We first of all, let me start by congratulating Manchester City. Oh, yeah, okay, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's only right, you know, mm -hmm. uh, give credit where it's due. So, it's only right that we congratulate Manchester City. Congratulations, defending their title yet again, right? It's painful for the, for the rest of us, but yes, the league is over. <laughs> now, we look up for the rest. FA Cup is coming up tomorrow. Uh, actually, actually, <laughs> we'll be speaking about that. And the uh, Pep says, uh, winning is addictive to them. So they are hoping they will be winning. Yes. But anyway, that's something we'll get to uh, much later as we wind up in the program. Okay. Let's talk about athletics and to bring to your knowledge, South Africa or uh, South Africa on Monday said it would lodge an appeal after Olympic champion Casta Semenya lost her case, challenging new rules forcing female athletes to regulate their uh, testosterone levels. Semenya's case has provoked a furious debate across sports worldwide about gender and uh, hype. Paradrogenic athletes, those with differences of sexual development. And this is something actually that will be affecting some of our athletes, and that is uh, Kenya's Olympic 800 meters bronze bronze medalist Margaret Nyerera Wamboy, who now feels like her career is slipping away from her with no idea when or if she will be able to compete internationally again. Just because of how you created, how God made you. Now, some people somewhere, let me say who they are, the IAAF, they feel like these people have an extra power. Yes, and uh, let me just put a disclaimer across. <laughs> I schooled with Nyerera in high school mm -hmm. at some point. She was good. Oh. Nyerera used to okay. run. W was it a primary or you went to a mixed secondary no, school? Like I did. You go away, <laughs> Pana. No, I went to. Uh, <laughs> A high school, a, a guy's high school. That oh, was. They used right. to host lots of lots of sports. So Nyerere used to come because I used to. I, I was in Nyeri, Nyeri okay. region. Mm -hmm. So Nyerere was good. People who used to run mm -hmm. that 800 meters, she would do it like like a hundred kilo, a hundred a sprinter. You know. Right. So it's it's sad to see now, especially when it this it is this close home mm -hmm. to someone like me and Nyerere, someone I know. Yeah. You feel ouch. You feel ouch. But then. I mean, just it's it's a difficult scenario. You you can't point out mm -hmm. and say that uh, we should run this this way and we should run this that way because mm -hmm. they, both sides have a case to answer. They they do, and with Casta Semenya, this is not the first time. There was also another time, like uh, two years ago. Again, the case was on her that uh, now that you are advantaged to other ladies you shouldn't be competing but then i was like if you feel like uh, she's advantaged because of her how she's created then come up with a spot that fits her and then bring someone else like now we will be having casta semenya and uh, nyerera from kenya and see how it goes see begs the question how many do you have how many do you have that they that are so fit? many because it is being said actually now our uh, one year who is 24 year old is one of the several star female athletes affected by an international association of athletics which is the iwaf ruling this month requires women with high levels of testosterone to take medication to suppress let me it. let me take you let, let me give you an uh, my argument of how many do you have look at uh, michael phelps in mm -hmm. uh, in swimming mm 
-hmm. they argue that he has a very big swing when it comes to swinging his his arm during the freestyle and uh, backstroke when it comes to the competitions mm -hmm. now how many do you actually have like michael phelps mm -hmm. that are going to turn up and say uh now we are ready to compete as in by the time you get to that yeah, michael sure. phelps will be, have been retired casa semenya i it's it's a scenario that, by the way, you Wazy, you can't call a name. You can't directly pinpoint something, but you have a point. All right. Yeah, actually, for lack of a better word, yeah, Bolt, Hussein Bolt. Yeah. He was normal. Yes. For lack of a better word, because yeah. they're saying this is not normal. Yes. So Hussein Bolt used to run very fast. Actually, I think he still can run fast. Yes. But now, why didn't they say now Hussein Bolt is running like nobody else? We should check him. You see, you see, usually we have uh, like the tests. Mm -hmm. uh, athletes and sportsmen and women will always go through tests. True. Um, you have a test to see, yes, you ran this, what, uh, what is the level of testosterone that you're producing? What mm -hmm. is the, how do your hormones actually operate? How do they, uh, you're put into um, MRI so that to directly and categorically say which age you are therefore you can't just forge the, your ages like initially mm -hmm. so I think we, with Usain Bolt it's purely that this guy is fast true he's just fast mm -hmm. but with guys like Semenya Nyairera you know that's now it gets to another level where this guy uh, is producing more in terms of hormones uh, mm -hmm. than the other females and that is where the advantage seems to, to come up but mm -hmm. In my view, in my view, my personal view, not Y254's view. True, true. Uh, sometimes there comes a time where you have to shun a few characters and a few individuals mm -hmm. for the betterment of the larger community, All in right. my view. All right, but then uh, people will be like, uh, you have discriminated these individuals just because of how they are created. And remember, advanced nations like the US, where they value every single right of a human being, they'll be like, no. Actually, I'm um, like, where are they? Because they should be speaking of the rights of individuals. Because one day, one time, assuming, assuming uh, Casta Semenya will be like, now, you know what? I'm changing my nationality. I'm no longer South African. I'm moving to US. Yeah. Will the US defend her? Well, certainly with what we've been seeing, you obviously have to see, the U.S. will have to defend her. And uh, it's, we, we can't pinpoint and say, yes, she's going to move. Mm -hmm. Every country has the, has the obligation to defend its citizens. Right. Even Kenya should actually uh, come up and say, we're defending our, our ladies, mm -hmm. something like that. So it's a, it's, a, it's a tough one, by the way. You just can't sure. call. It's, it's, one of those, it's one of those conversations in sports where it's like, it's like the religion conversation nation, nationally, where you just, right. you just like to shy away from that kind of a conversation but because you, do not, you don't quite know where to put your stand. You know, true. it's hard. It's oh, hard. It's true. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm hoping that these people will sit down and uh, in their wisdom find it not right to discriminate anyone just because of how they are created. If they have so much testosterone and they can only run, let them run. But now, <laughs> the no, you is, see, there's the a difference between start, being yeah? talented to run and there's also a difference being talented and being having an, an advantage. Because it makes no difference with someone who can run and then he, they are gifted to run faster, like Hussein. And then there's someone who is gifted to run, but now they have some extra strength. But you see, it's, it's not the same. You see, with, with Hussein Bolt, it was, it was like... This person is actually gifted. He's actually fast. Like his muscles move faster. He's, he has just adapted to moving fast. Okay. Uh, with this ni maumbile, as in it's in them. Mm -hmm. Basically, you put uh, yourself and uh, one of our camera ladies and put them on a, an armrest or an arm wrestle. Mm -hmm. You're gonna beat them. You're absolutely going to beat them because of the way your hormones are. Yeah, adapted, I, yeah, I understand now. Genetically, I am different. <laughs> we are not discriminating ladies. And we are not saying this because, the, because they are women, but because we want to understand the whole thing about the testosterone and all that. But anyway, we're hoping that whatever, will be, uh, whatever decision that will come about, it will favor just everyone. Let's move to summer transfers. We have a very close window between 
yesterday 16th and then the 8th, 8th of, of August. August this month and after sixth placed finished in the Premier League Manchester United is expected uh, to try overhaul their squad and make changes uh, that will enable them to challenge higher up the table next season and Manchester United's executive vice chairman Edward said this week that he will use the club's financial muscle to help socially build uh, following a turbulent season. It was a bad season for Manchester United True. and also to other teams just because of the players. Actually there was an argument why was Manchester United failing after they signed Socia to be the manager now for real not a caretaker because since he came in they never won. And now the argument is we have the players. The players are the bad ones. Should we see a change, a drastic change in Manchester United? First of all, with the social argument, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's, it's history. History is repeating itself. Look at Chelsea, Roberto De Matteo, interim manager, high-flying, permanent manager. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are almost fighting relegation, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I feel there's something to do with mentality, with the mentality where mm -hmm. just keep him as the interim manager where he's not sure. He's not sure of what, what his, his future is all about. Right. He's looking to deliver. That is what that that is what I feel. Mm -hmm. Then once the season is finished, let him start now a new season right. as the permanent manager. Mm -hmm. To the transfers now with United. See, I was watching Jose Mourinho yesterday, and he was laughing his lungs out, mm -hmm. saying that uh, you see the problem was not me. Yes. It's true, the problem was not me, mm -hmm. and I also don't think the problem is not the lack of depth in the United squad. I mean, you have Pogba in there. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Lukaku, for lack of a better term, in there. You have Mata, you have Lingard, you have mm -hmm. Rashford, you have all these guys. Mm -hmm. Once you, even if you bring in someone, some, just spend something, as Edward would say, muscles, spend something, mm -hmm. and uh, he comes and the mentality is still the same. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of soccer, soccer mostly you play it mentally. Mentally, quite kill. You know, my director is on my ears, and he, because he belongs to Chelsea, like yes, you, of he course. says he says even if we we took uh, Socia away from Manchester United or even we changed the whole team, nothing will change. <laughs> As in, Manchester United will remain that team that the perception of the public has it right now. Let's talk about your team where striker Alvaro Morata says he will is not interested in returning to Chelsea after spending the second half of the season on loan at Atletico Madrid. And he has declared that he will do everything in his power to remain with Los uh, Blancos, while Hazard is said to be moving to Real Madrid. Look at it. Sad, particularly the Hazard story. I mean, we, we, we are not we at Jakubali, but uh, if it has to happen, it, it, it was bound to happen in time soon. Mm -hmm. With Morata, I think Morata is the only s Spaniard striker who's flopped. He came from, from a Spanish La Liga mm -hmm. and flopped. Usually look at, uh, at uh, the interchange with guys, when guys come from Spain mm -hmm. to England and from England to Spain. When guys come to England, most of them tend to flop. It is true. true. Uh, yes. The English Premier League is very hard. It's not, it's not your usual kind of league. You have six, seven teams that could possibly win the title. Yeah? So actually, one of the strikers that actually did the best was Diego Costa when he came from Spain and right. actually did his thing. And one exception from this other side, but when you have guys coming from England, mm -hmm. going all the way to Spain, they tend to deliver. Look at Gareth Bale, look at Luis Suarez, mm -hmm. guys who actually kind of deliver. Mm -hmm. So the Morata story, it's neither here nor there. No. Uh, actually, no. This bit of, of saying he will do just anything he can to ensure he doesn't come back to Chelsea. I'm like, what happens to him? You wouldn't say. Why would a player speak with such bitterness about the team they, they were for? Okay, though he went with uh, on loan, but then he kind of spoke like, I hate that team. That's the feeling I'm getting myself. You, you would tend to feel that way, that mm -hmm. uh, this character feels that mm -hmm. he didn't get the applause that he required. But look at what he did at, uh, at Chelsea. He wasted us. He made us the laughing stock. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he was leading with the highest number of misses. He was leading with the number, highest number of offsides. He was then it makes sense when he says, I'm not going there, because maybe the public and the fans, that is, 
they were against him. Well, you may say that, and also uh, some sort of phobia. These players know England is hard. They know it's it's not easy. <laughs> they know, yeah. You you have real task. <laughs> All right. So Hazard is said to be moving, and he's the man who has uh, like helped Chelsea come from number six to where they are at the end of the season. Forty-eight percent of Chelsea goals have come courtesy of Hazard. He has either assisted a goal, he has either scored a goal. That's too much. Mm -hmm. That's too much relying on one person. Mm -hmm. We, it's sad. I personally, I actually feel sad that uh, we're going to have to give Hazard his room. Mm -hmm. But also, let him relax. Kuna pressure. You go to Real Madrid, you'll find uh, a big rebuilding job there. Mm -hmm. They have uh, some kid from Brazil who I can't remember his name who will be challenging for his uh, left midfield position. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Kina Gareth Bale, you have Kina Isco, you have. You, you see, it's not always a bed of roses, yeah? yeah. He is a talented a squad, player. There's a squad. Yes, there's a squad, but mm -hmm. he is a talented player. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, now it's single, it single handedly depends on him. All right, uh, now Liverpool. Roberto Firmino is target. Is, target, uh, is a target for Paris Saint-Germain boss Thomas Tuchel as he aims to bolster his attacking opinions in order to compete for a Champions League title next season. So Firmino has enjoyed another fine campaign at Liverpool. They have performed and uh, we're hoping come first June. <laughs> uh, netting 16 attempts and providing 7 assists with, while contributing selflessly to combine an, uh, on one Europe's deadliest, deadliest alongside Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane. Just goes to show you what kind of player he is when he's given the right service, you know. Mm -hmm. Firmino is, uh, is growing to be one of the best nines in the world. Mm -hmm. Certainly not still, not yet the best nine. Uh, currently the best nine I think is Mario Mandzukic. Mm -hmm. But uh, as a nine, for, for Firmino is, uh, is growing. You look at uh, the lethal options that he has up front. You have guys like uh, Salah, you have guys like Mane, you have now guys like Keita who just supply right behind him. And uh, it's, it takes time. It would take time for him to, to still grow and get it to the peak that he actually requires. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at uh, where he's going, PSG. You see, I, I also don't think players look at it from a point of view where, will I get playing time, like I used to get at, at uh, Liverpool? Mm -hmm. You're going to PSG to meet Neymar. You're going to PSG to meet Cavani. You know, will I get, am I going to be picked as the starting 11 as regularly as I am being picked in England, in Liverpool? Uh, Jurgen Klopp has, has had a squad, a solid squad, that he actually has molded over the past three, four years. And uh, if I were Firmino, I'd basically wait for one more season just to see whether we're gonna we're, we're going to take this thing. But again, not stay too long because uh, you look at the Dagger the, the hair story. Right. Stay too long, flop he at the very end. It. Yeah. But anyway, he still remains to be the best. We will remember him. Now, Arsenal are said to lose Aaron Ramsey to Juve. Uh, Peter Cech is retiring, and now <laughs> Welbeck, <laughs> after being out of the season for a very long time, he is now released. Free transfer. Wow. Uh, on the radio, I was listening to Arsenal, and Arsenal's worries are just more than nimingi sana. Mm -hmm. uh, you lose Ramsey, one of the most experienced players in that squad right now. Who mm -hmm. else are you are you remaining with? Uh, does Matasaka pl still play? You don't know. Does uh, we have guys in the left back in a Bellarine, mm -hmm. all those guys? You you're remaining with a squad that has not has no depth, and uh, but. Aaron Ramsey is a good is a good midfielder. Holding midfielder will just pick the right passes up front, mm -hmm. and uh, they're gonna miss him. They're going to to miss him. Mm -hmm. However, they are, they are scouting former Manchester United player uh, Memphis Depay. Uh, flopped at United, but he's been outstanding where he's been for the past couple of seasons, mm -hmm. and they have been scouting him just to basically get to see whether they kind of get him back to England and to the Emirates. Let's hope her and see how that goes. Mm -hmm. With uh, the upcoming story that was with La Gazette and Aubameyang, today actually on Instagram at, uh, at about during midday, uh, Alexander La Gazette actually tweeted from uh, the Emirates and uh, the training ground for, from the Emirates and said, you know what, uh, this is my garden. Just to, sh just to show people that I'm not going anywhere, I'm he's here, staying, he's staying. I'm here to stay. This is my garden, All end of quotes. All right, so uh, Czech was your guy at some point, as he is now retiring. Yes. What, what do you make of him at uh, this particular point? 
an amazing guy, an amazing keeper, one of the best keepers you'll ever get. Obviously, age is catching up. When age catches up, you start to flop. You start to to make mistakes that are uh, here, not there. You know, mm -hmm. some too shoddy, shoddy mistakes because age is catching up. And the guys you're playing with are your children, are your sons. You know. Mm -hmm. But uh, Czech is actually a, a nice keeper, mm -hmm. has been a nice keeper, uh, tried to move on with the legacy at uh, uh, Arsenal, and uh, I think he actually helped to mould the mentality of that squad, because sometimes in a squad you actually require a team that uh, has a leader, has a leader in the dressing, dressing room, has someone who will say, no, we are not going to do this, we are going to do this. True. And I think that has been checked to Arsenal for the past couple of seasons. True. All right. Now uh, we have to finish with this one thing that will be happening uh, the FA Finals, where Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola says winning is ad is so addictive as his side go in search of an unprecedented domestic tremble on Saturday, which is tomorrow they face Watford in the FA Cup final at Wembley. Watford and Wolves are the best teams outside of the top six. Yes. And they were consistent teams. And now if City wins at Wembley having already qualified for the Champions League, then Wolves as as the team who finished seventh in the Premier League will will qualify for Europe Europe for the first time since nineteen eighty. More to that, they would go into the second qualifying round of the Europe League. There are other teams that are of concern. Now, that would see United, now the Manchester United, who finished sixth in the Premier League, qualify for the Europe League group stage w stages. So if now uh, the Wolves, Watford wins against mm -hmm. Man City, in, <laughs> United would go into the second qualifying round, which starts on 25th of July. You know, I'm liking the way people are taking it away from Watford. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a, it, people are taking it away from Watford, and this is a final. A final has nothing to do with form. We just turn up and play our thing. 2014, let me remind you, FA Cup final, 15 minutes in, Hull City versus Arsenal. Hull City 2, Arsenal nil. 15 minutes, people are shocked. Yes, that's what can happen in a final. Mm -hmm. A final has nothing to do with uh, form. Take again nothing from Watford. They came from behind to beat Wolves. Uh, I don't, I don't like the way people are taking it away from Watford. But yes, this is City, arguably sure. the best team in Europe now. Mm -hmm. uh, assemble a good squad. They have uh, a UEFA ban on their head. I had something like that coming yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's just hope for the best. But I think um, more more Watford are gonna put it in a fight. But City might end up winning it. Uh, it would be a big congratulatory remark to Wolves now making it to Europe. It's uh, it's wow. It's big. That's big for them. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, one team which is now their neighbours, Manchester United, uh, their fate is at stake. If they lose, trouble comes in. So I don't know what will be the fate of the Manchester United after tomorrow's match against uh, Manchester City against. Watford, we will watch it and see. So, who is taking home? Sadly, City, but Watford will put in a fight. All right, they will struggle. We will see. It's it's home stretch for this league. As the other league are coming soon, we will wait and see whether this uh, some of these teams will come up. Many thanks for coming. We are out of time. Oh, we thank appreciate you. you coming. And uh, uh, you are a true fan, I see. Chelsea. No, but I when UEFA, <laughs> I think that's that's where are you? Where are you as a United fan? Look at yourself. All right, I'm um, I'm I'm humbly ashamed. <laughs> but anyway, many thanks for keeping us company back home. He has been my guest, Brian Mushiri. Uh, I will see you on Monday. Keep it Y two five four coming up next. You will be uh, in, uh, entertained. My name is Dereva Hillary. Have a good night.